Today on Vulnerable, I get the opportunity to speak with Monica Padman and Liz Plank. Together, they co-host Racing to 35, a new podcast where they document freezing their eggs together. It's a really impactful and important piece of work that I'm excited to be tuning into. Also, Liz is a best-selling author, journalist, um, gender expert, and... Miss Monica Padman is the producer of Dak Shepard's Armchair Expert. So today we will dig into many, many things on Vulnerable. Guys, thank you so much for being on. Thanks for having us. So, I miss you, Liz. I know. I'm just like, I'm like, I mean, we love you, Christy. And that's we're okay. so excited you're joining talk. Our, our, our little, <laughs> yeah, I was like, this is just going to be like a hangout. It's going to be so fun. Yes. Oh, good. That That's the best. That's obviously, that's what the people want. You guys know what a podcast is, right? I just want to make sure mm, it's I'm where there's part of it. I've heard of it. <laughs> 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 um I'm I'm obviously the uh I'm the rookie here. Um uh Monica and Liz uh are, have entered the chat here at Vulnerable and I mean I'm blown away um that I get to chat with you. I'm uh m- m- fangirling truly. Oh. Aww. <laughs> Us too. No, you're doing amazing. Liz, Liz deserves it. No. That's um, not true, Monica. You absolutely we all deserve it, damn it. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I'll take that. That's right. You're right. <laughs> Everyone take compliments. Um, it's something yeah. that I think women, I mean, it's uh, a lot of people, you know, it's not like a brand new thought. Um, but yeah, women don't don't take compliments. It's like that Amy Schumer skit, uh, sketch where they all just like, they're like, I'm the largest piece of shit that's ever, you know, <laughs> inhabited the planet. Um, so yeah, Monica's amazing. Christy's amazing. Liz is amazing. <laughs> women are crushing it. Oh it's my true. god! I am, I am, I am here for all of this, and I'm here for you guys. Um, you know, uh, so where are you guys then? You guys are not in the same space. It looks like Liz, you're back in New York, or are you in Chicago? No, to my chagrin, um, I am not with Monica. Um, so Monica is, in, is still in LA, and I'm in Brooklyn, okay. where I uh-huh. live. Yeah, <laughs> she put quotes. <laughs> Remember, this is a podcast, Liz. <laughs> Remember? Oh no, I, mean, I do. I live mean, here. I know, I do live here. Let's get off like running in terms of the newest podcast that you have, because there's millions of things that you guys have and have done. So many amazing accomplishments and topics that you guys are literally masters at. So, you have the newest podcast that you guys have. Is that in studio? Like, let's uh, let's chat about it. Yeah. Yes. Monica, do you want to do you want to start? Sure. So the new podcast is called Race to 35. It's a fertility podcast. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yes, Liz came to LA. Uh, She left her home in Brooklyn. And (laughs) what is with the quotations? (laughs) Because I'm getting, I want her to move here. uh Uh, I want her to move here. So that's not. So it's like Voldemort. Brooklyn is now Voldemort. Like we don't speak about Brooklyn. We don't talk about Bruno. B. Um, uh, we don't talk yeah. about Brooklyn. <laughs> the yeah, so word. She came to LA and she stayed and we froze her eggs at the same time and we recorded every day of wow. the process and mm-hmm. we um, talked about how we were feeling throughout like mm. <laughs> the, that evolution and also we talked to experts <laughs> and people who've had interesting fertility stories. So it's kind of this amalgamation of all things fertility. And um, it was quite a ride. Uh, we did record it in the attic where we record Armchair Expert, because this is under our armchair umbrella, our production company. That's right. So um, oh, that's right. we, yeah, we recorded in the attic. And we did some Zoom. We did some in person. We did all of our stuff in person. We did everything in person. We did each other's shots. Well, I did Liz's shots, and she stood <laughs> there while I did mine. Yeah, I didn't um, do anything. <laughs> yeah, Monica did all the shots. <laughs> oh my gosh, Liz, I am I am editing our first episode right now. That's what I was just doing up until oh. we got on here. Hence my hair. Um, and it is hair like, is the best hair. Woo! You look it's a ride. It's a ride. What do you mean? It's weird to go back. Yeah, and okay. and hear us then. Um, cause you know, the first episode is the day we do our first shots and, um, my best okay. friend Callie, 
joins on that episode. She had already Wait, done, so Liz already is not your best it. friend? I don't know. I don't know. It's a tear. As Mindy Kaling says, <laughs> best friend is a tear, not a person. And I like mm-hmm. that. Yes. So Liz is, of course, on the end of tear. Yes. No, but that's actually funny <laughs> you bring that up. Because Liz and I had met twice before we did this. It, we weren't mm-hmm. best friends. We are now. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Right. Uh, but but um, yeah, we, we like really went from zero to 100 in and, you know, we, we went straight to the sweat hand phase, right, of like friendship where you're, you're just like seeing each other in kind of your worst, uh, your best, your, you know, authentically how you are feeling in the moment and talk, talking about period, uh, you know, stains and poop and like, you know, just like, uh, you know, <laughs> blood and, and guts and all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, that will, yeah, if you're looking to fast forward a friendship. Um, Your trigger warning. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> just talk about talk about poop. Um, I think is yes. actually, you don't have to freeze your eggs. Um, because it, it does <laughs> impact your bowel movements. Um, that was one thing that I didn't think was going to happen. But obviously, your follicles and, you know, the eggs getting so big. Uh, can and and you're taking hormones. You're taking so many things. So it it uh, it does. You know, have have some stimulate on deck um, just in case. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, and I wonder if that's why moms are so interconnected too, because they typically mm. go through a lot of that same bodily sort of elimination and a lot of yes. stress on their bodies, and it kind of does really tether you to one another almost immediately. I am curious. Yeah. Did you guys kind of listen to each other's work? prior to meeting, which may have contributed to your shorthand. Yeah, Liz was on our chair. I mean, she was a guest. Was, yeah. That's how we met. Um, there you and go. So, OK, yeah. got it. Yeah. Got it. We we at Armchair are big fans of Liz and love her work and then, right. you know, follow each other on Instagram. So keep up with her that way. And we would text every now and then. But um, but no, yeah, it, it definitely skyrocketed us. That's awesome. Yeah, I've been stalking Liz, too. Oh, well, I stalked the both of you, so um, get ready. But I, yes, I was a a Monica Patman stalker as well. Uh, There's a whole, Mm -hmm. you know, big group of us uh, out there uh, across the country and the world. So so, uh, Armchair was like... The number one, like my friend Ashley at the time, like she she was like, make a list of all the podcast, like the podcast you want to go on. And I remember being like, well, obviously Ar- Armchair is the number one. I-, I actually, at the time I was like, I'm not even going to put it on the list because I know I won't, it won't. And, and she was like, no, put it on the list, you know, manifest your dreams. Uh, and so mm. uh, when they, you know, Monica actually reached out, uh, I, I just kind of, yeah. I mean, I really thought I was like dreaming. Um, and it was such a, yeah, it was such a, cool opportunity to get to, to go on, on their podcast because I was, yeah, I'm, I'm a I'm still a huge fan. It's like fun to become friends with, with people you're fangirling, you know? I agree. That's uh, hopefully currently happening for me right now. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is, we're fast forwarding friendships. When you talk about great. your poop, it's going to be I will absolutely wild. tell you yeah. about what it was like to poop on the table after having the baby you know like that stuff we're like it's I real have an, open, an open butt yeah an open butt for you guys <laughs> open um, butt <laughs> an open butt an open heart whatever you need um okay so so for t- you so you were saying that it was sort of almost like a time capsule in in editing this first episode um I, what more about that I mean do you, how did you guys really feel like you grew overall not only in your friendship it seems like you guys are probably tighter now than before, but just in general, what what are your takeaways from this entire journey? I think it taught us about strength. I mean, at the beginning, like in this, in this first episode that I'm editing, I'm remembering how anxious we were and how mm-hmm. it really felt like a mountain. Like it was like, okay, and we're really taking it day by day. And it was like, okay, we have 10 days of this this is tough. And then, Hmm. you know, you get through it. You do get through, we, you know, we joke, there's, there's a, um, my, my friend sent a little video of her kid saying, you can do hard things. And it's like really cute and adorable. And it was like so heartwarming, but we kept like saying that in, in the little kid (laughs) voice. And it, it is true. It is really true. And I think that was a bit, for me, that was a big takeaway. Yeah. Yeah. And just, you know, generally, I think both of us 
uh, realizing the strength of our of, of the female body and and just like of what it, the female body is 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 capable of was like a real again I I know w- women can get pregnant I'm aware uh, of the birthing process and how life is created but I guess I had never had you know any experience I've never have never been pregnant and obviously the mm-hmm. freezing your eggs doesn't make you pregnant um, but it <laughs> will like make you have the lifestyle of a pregnant person uh, in, in in many respects and once I am pregnant I'll probably like laugh at the fact that I'm comparing those two things but but no it's it's like reg you know the shots are every day at the same time you right you know depending on what your doctor you know is recommending there's a certain mm-hmm. diet that you you know should be following there's a certain just you know, you're not supposed to exercise. Like it's it's very much your 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 concern and and attention is is around um, something that's growing in, in inside of you and that you have to care for. And so, um, yeah, f- for me, it like awakened. I don't know, not my maternal instinct. Like I don't even know if that's a real thing, but my parenting instinct and and sort of what's possible for my body to do that's like so cool and beyond. You know, I, I, you know. I think, especially living in a patriarchal society, where, where women are constantly being told that we're, you know, the weaker gender in all kinds of different ways, and uh, yeah, going through something like that. You know, I'm sure becoming a mother. I, I know becoming. You know, so many women will talk about it. It's it's like an extremely empowering uh, experience, even though we treat like moms like crap. Um, you know, I think that happens for a reason, right? Like people are afraid of what the female body can do because what it can do is like unsmagable you know and incredible (laughs) yeah yeah I think like the divine feminine really awakens in you even from conception and 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 you guys are in those nascent stages of that conception process you know and I mean a lot of Mm -hmm. people are moving from the fertility shot straight to conception with their partners and then immediately that's all starting so like you were just talking about tears it's like the tears yeah. of that motherhood journey um and even for people who are taking the fertility drugs and then they never actually end up getting pregnant um yep. you know uh it's it's still it's still they are still in that journey with their bodies and everything mm-hmm. and again like you're talking about just as a side note with the the patriarchal thing like i do i i'm on board with everything that you've ever said about them <laughs> um love them but they're a little dumb mm-hmm. they need to catch up um yes is that concept of like you know um you know every month you know you got you get new eggs every month like what's the big deal like who cares about the eggs you'll get more <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah there's so much that no one that i can't even really put it necessarily on men but because there was so much we didn't know about our own bodies that we learned oh, through this true. process we didn't know anything yeah. we didn't know about what follicles were we were like what is that is that different from eggs is it the same thing like we did, we learned technically we learned so much stuff throughout this whole process mm-hmm. it was like a crash course and i also think what's what i only can see in retrospect is it was a good lesson in the lack of control that any of us mm-hmm. have over anything like you know we put in all this effort and we give a lot of energy and we do our best, but we don't really have control over the outcome. And that's with so many things in life. And it's always mm. kind of a good reminder, especially for me, because I'm a huge control freak. So anytime I can put myself <laughs> in the position to be reminded, oh, actually you don't have any control is good. It's necessary. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can yeah. do hard things, right? <laughs> you can. Or in the kid voice, or the kid voice. Let me try the kid voice. You can do hard things. <laughs> that was really good. close. That was really that good. That was really good. <laughs> Not it. Not it. I really Not recommend. I, I mean, it really helped. Thank Monica, you. like, no jokes. Because, again, the, the shots were not a big deal to Monica because she's way uh, stronger than me. But I, like, mm-hmm. every day it was, like, a, a real, you know, it, it just, if I have one shot, like, even like this COVID booster, I'm like thinking about it every day. I'm like, I gotta go do the COVID booster, and it like it really. Uh, it, if anyone has a fear of needles, it it will. Re- it's 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 a real thing, um, and so anxiety. yeah, yeah, the anxiety of it and the whole, you know, in a way, the anticipation can be you know worse too. But anyway, so it really helped. We can do hard things. Saying it in a funny kid <laughs> voice, I just recommend it. I feel like I should keep doing it in other things. I I because yes. it really. Yeah, it, it is true, and it kind of calms you down. 
you know. Well, and honestly, <laughs> who's more empowered than like a little kid? Like they don't know that there's any limitations. They are not right. fearful. Like yeah. they're they are told over time that that mm-hmm. this equals failure and that this is what failure looks like. Or yeah. you know, I mean, I, they are fascinating creatures to watch. That is for sure. Yeah, little girls yeah, are, are you know yeah especially incredible. Um, and uh, yeah. yeah, something happens when I, you I, you know. I have two girls, okay? Um, um, I have a five-year-old and a three-year-old, and I mm. live in Texas. I live in Austin, Texas. Wow. And yeah, it's been, a, it's, been a, it's been a ride. You know, I've lived here for two years, and Austin is an amazing city. Um, but for me, it's been very challenging to sort of be a mother um, and sort of live here with everything that's been going on. Yeah. And, um, you know... Um, I, at one point I did, I did want to leave, you know, like at one point I actually fell into a deep depression after row, but, um, mm. I kind of came out of that and my, you know, every, I like everyone. My husband was like dodging me for like at least a week, week and yeah. a half. Um, and then he was like, what can I do? You know, like all of that. Uh, but, uh, I think now we're a couple months out and, you know, it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard to continue to feel like you want to, show up and be a part of the bigger conversation um, for the women that may not understand that their rights were taken. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot of women here that are voting against their against their own best interest. And mm-hmm. so it is uh, an interesting time to be living here. I will just say that much. Uh, well, I was just going to, you know, uh, to bring it back to, to fertility, like these laws um, are many of them uh, could impact IVF and are in, 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 in impacting fertility treatments. And even like there's some, you know, uh, experts who are saying we don't know if this would um, affect egg freezing and, and, and really kind of especially if you, you know, Monica and I did it in the way where we just froze the eggs um later they'll sprinkle some sperm on them if we choose to to go that route um but many women uh will freeze embryos and that uh you know is is under threat you know uh, in a in a mm-hmm. world where where yeah the the government is is making these decisions for families so so yeah it's it's really it, i mean for me it, it was an interesting uh, sort of again empowering like fuck you <laughs> to kind of do this again you realize how powerful your your body is and you're like oh that's why they're mm-hmm. trying to trying to take it away like you were saying there's this weird dichotomy of how you're so in control of the choice right but that you are are also in a, out of control of the whatever comes out of that right yeah how are you dealing with that because it's so true, especially Austin. I was thinking that because I was there earlier this yeah. year and I love it there so much. My friend David Ferrier is there currently right this very second. Oh, um, cool. But I love it and it's so progressive and it's so liberal and it's so fun, but it sits in the middle of this state that is not. And I, I've been wondering, like, if I lived here, would I have to move? I mean, it's mm. a hard thing to balance. <laughs> but also, I also want people to who are like-minded to move to Texas, you know, to move to these places to sort of balance out. It's one of those weird, um, complex situations, I guess, questions. Well, so I actually kept the, um, the Austin Chronicle, which is like our voice magazine. And I kept it when it, when it had the Roe v. Wade, uh, edition come out and I kept it for my girls and it's in my little, you know, time capsule closet for them, which is really just me hoarding shit. Mm-hmm. Um, sure. and I have it because it means a lot to me to have been here, you know, to be present. Yeah. Um, and you know, we, w- within like a couple month period, we also had Uvalde. And mm-hmm. so, you know, as a parent, there's so mm-hmm. many things that have taken a hit, um, for me in my own backyard, quite literally, you know? Yeah. And so, um, it, it has been difficult, but there, what I will tell you about Austin in particular is that community exists here where it doesn't in other places. I've lived, you know, in New England. I've lived in Brooklyn. I've lived in, you know, West Hollywood, Orange County, you name it. I've lived a lot of different places. But um, 
Austin, like after the storm, because we had that crazy storm last year Mm -hmm. or even a year and a half ago. I don't even fucking know time. Um, I moved in November. I was without power in February and seeing my breath and, you know, and my kids were like, you know, people were getting hypothermic and children were coming in from playing and a couple of them passed away. So it was FEMA level bad. But people didn't really understand it. They were like, oh, Texas had a snowstorm. It was like, no, we were, our grid's down. We were not prepared for this. This is literally like like apocalyptic. Um, the, the HEB, which is like our big grocery store, they literally took all the food that was going to go bad and they gave it to the community. People like wow. in um, my neighborhood in particular were, cho- were using their wood and like distributing wood for people to burn, you know, and, and to keep warm. Um People were, I got saved by someone from my Facebook post um, that was an RA of mine in college. I went to Barnard and she was my RA and I hadn't talked to her since I was 18 in a hot mess. And, you know, (laughs) next thing I know, her husband's coming with a Yukon and like taking us out to an an Airbnb that couldn't be rented. And so we were saved. And so I experienced a level of Mm. community that I'd never seen before which is what Austin truly is. And and the weird thing is people coexist here. Um, even in the midst of all this tragedy and confusion and chaos, people are coexisting. And um, it's kind of really interesting to see and to live into this weird intersectional, like it's very strange, yeah. very strange, but positive for the most part, positive. Good. And it, it, didn't you have like yeah. a, mun- a municipal, like, the didn't they try and protect Roe in Austin, like with municipal laws? I think I you know, I, I, I venture to say they probably I venture to say that they probably did. When I first right. came to Austin, I had a pregnancy scare um, and uh, I had to find something that resembled a Planned Parenthood. And I called a couple doctors because I didn't have a primary care person and I would have been you know, extremely, this was talking like, I just, I needed to explain, like I needed a pregnancy test, right? Like that's all I wanted. Turns out, spoiler alert, I was not pregnant. I was just being responsible and trying to figure out what was going on. But, Mm -hmm. you know, I have two children and I wanted to figure out what my options were in general. Mm -hmm. So no one get heated about this, please. But (laughs) I, I, I found a place, right? And this was truly my first experience coming from California and like I said, New York. And I was laugh, I was basically like, edged off the phone by two different doctors. And then I was, um, I finally found a place and it was a very different experience. And it was, in a, it was a very scary kind of like, you know, double doors, double door, double door, you know, kind of thing. Mm. And it's like, I'm just looking for a pregnancy test. <laughs> oh my God. And then when I was negative, when I was negative, when I was negative, they looked at me like I was there for the wrong reason. They were like, why are you, you why are you here if you're negative kind of thing, right? Like, they were like, is she a spy, kind of? It felt like the tone Ugh. of it was just, um, yeah, you know, and, and when you're in your early 20s going to Planned Parenthoods, it, w- it, was a, it, was a, it was a refuge. It was a place where you could go to know that there was, there was a community for you there, right? But in this regard, it was a very different experience. So that's an exclusive, guys. Here you go. Oh, yeah. Open butt, now an open... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> heart open doctors <laughs> open heart <laughs> yes <laughs> but it's like it, it all these things should just not be you know like this complicated and and this controversial and yeah I just feel it, it yeah. just is such a shame um that yeah, yeah the, it's so loaded right and in, in all these different ways when I don't know there's just so, so, so much more important things to be thinking about <laughs> and like spending and our attention on you know than there truly, there truly the is. And in terms of like your podcast, why now? Why do you feel? Because everything that you ladies do is serving a greater purpose, not in just terms of gender, but um, also just in educating people about what, like what you're saying, what is important. So like, why now with the podcast? I mean, if I'm going to just be super honest, I want to give you like a lofty answer about like this time and history, but really it's that I was turning 35 <laughs> it was, and that's the number, that's the age that they tell you, like do it by then. Um, and I knew that, I knew that number for a long time and I've been like, okay, like I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. And then, you know, it's 2022 and I was like, oh my God, it's, this is the year I turned 35. Ah, I have to figure this out. And then 
and then I, I asked if Liz was considering doing the same thing. And so we did it. So yeah, so no, it, it happened wow. to be fairly <laughs> timely. Although, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> I think anything that has to do with the female body or women's rights or um, anything in that realm is timely <laughs> because we have not overcome any of these issues or we, you know, it's two steps forward, one step back. And so we're always in mm-hmm. it. So it's kind of always the perfect time to be talking about women's bodies, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, w- I also turned 35 this year and it's a total, um, you know, it was total serendipity that Monica reached out to me like three days after I decided that I was going to freeze my eggs. Like, like actually I think it was five, like the exact amount of days that I'd made the decision was like five <laughs> days. And then Monica just texts me out of the blue, like, are you freezing your eggs? I was like, how do you know? Where are you? I'm in Turks and Caicos. Like, are you like you in my head? Like, um, but yeah, like it's, it, it was, I think it was, you know, yes, it, it was just like logistics, I guess, that led to this or, or you know, Monica say like, I, I turned 35, but I think there was something like the, uni- there was something magical about it. Like it's, super, it's kind of weird. It's kind of, yeah, it's a sim, exactly. It's part of the simulation. It was always meant to happen this way. Um, and, and yeah, like I, I truly, I'm serious. And I don't know if Monica, you feel this way, but I don't want to speak for you, but like, the freezing my eggs has fundamentally like changed me and and has like not just changed my life but I, I feel like my my brain is wired in a different way or like there were just neural pathways like new ones that I that that have been formed or or, or maybe old cool. ones I wasn't using I, I don't really know but um yeah it, it was a really profound experience um it's it, it's not a small thing to do you, you know it's it's mm-hmm. You know, j- just again, the logistics of it are, are, are a lot. And so you're, you're thinking about it a lot. And um, yeah, I don't know about you, Monica, but yeah, I, I, feel, I don't feel like a different person, but I feel like it, it was a, a real life experience. Uh, definitely. I agree. Mon, I just heard from you, and I just called you Mon, like we're friends. Can are we do it? Like Can I call you Mon? <laughs> yeah, please. I, I, I think this is my like my my like the shittiest trait I have is I'm like, oh hey D, oh hey this person. It's no, like, oh that's met. nice. Okay. <laughs> I just heard you on Chelsea's uh, podcast, uh, and you were saying that you her. may not. I love it, but you were saying you may not use your eggs. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, yes. Um, that was before I froze. We did the process, but still, oh, yeah. Okay. But I don't know. I mean, it's it was there. I did this for insurance. I did not do it as a. I am a hundred percent using these. I even I haven't even ruled out that I want to get or try to get pregnant naturally. I mean, any of or that I'm gonna get pregnant at all or want kids. Like it's still very up in the air for me as to what I want. But I did know that I wanted some insurance in the bank um, in case I need it. Um, yeah. So so I, I you know I've never been a person that's like. I meant to have children. Some people are like that. They're like that when they're very young. They know that they want that. Their their instinct is very strong. And I, mine never has been. I've always been like, maybe. And then some days I'm like, I really do. And then some days I'm like, actually, I really don't. I really like my single life or my, you know, mm-hmm. quote, selfish life or independent life is what I would like to say. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, so, so I don't know. I still don't know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's okay. And that's yeah. okay. By the way, 35, what a shitty thing for them to call it. They call it a geriatric pregnancy. I know. It's insane. I know. It's can insane. we please return that? <laughs> like, can we please, like, a, like, can we return that as something? I don't know what, like, unicorn pregnancy. Like, something amazing and empowering. and like. I like that. Yeah. I think unicorn is a perfect, I think it's a medically <laughs> accurate, too. And, and you know, we, we say this on the podcast, but, like, if they're going to call our, like the pregnancy geriatric, they should call the ejaculation geriatric. If a guy's over the age of 35, it should be geriatric ejaculation. Then I'm okay yeah. with it. Then I'm okay. I'm okay we with ageism make, goes both ways. We tried to Fair make enough. it into like a fun one word, like geriaculation <laughs> or something. Like we, we tried, <laughs> but we didn't really get there. But <laughs> anyone has any ideas? I think we should coin it. 
and then pe- and then we should just use it in conversation like as much as possible <laughs> and then it'll yes. it'll you know normalize it'll become it a vibe. normalize yeah. <laughs> yeah no that's so funny it's funny how you were saying like uh 35 because i remember when i was living in la and being part of the uh the f boy uh, era of high nightclub and all the crazy, mm. you know, mid 2000s bullshit feminism that was just almost non existent. Um, uh, I remember talking to some guy, right? And this guy was like, Oh, you're turning 26. Another year, we're going to have to throw you in the, throw you back in the water. Oh my and God. <laughs> it really, it, I'll never forget it, obviously, because this guy was like, you know, king of the uh geriatric ejaculation Ugh, um and of course juvenile I was, ejaculation and i was like, like but it's so rare that you actually get somebody with the audacity to speak to you with their inner thoughts you know yeah. <laughs> stay in there but for them to actually reveal themselves to you about how some men see women's age and their bodies and stuff like that and so I, I'm, I, the title of your podcast really harkens that moment for me mm. um, where I was never fully aware of my age at 26, yeah. much less than when I was 34 and I was pregnant and they told me, oh yeah, this is a geriatric pregnancy. Yeah. They really like to also, remind like, you <laughs> that you're too old to be doing this. And I mean, look, I, there's also some, there's some evolutionary truth to it like there is truth to the fact that your eggs do you know there's a a drop off that's real uh but that doesn't mean like the moment after you turn 35 you're like yeah should go be thrown in a dumpster or something and why do you think that is guys honestly why do you think that and i'm 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 truly i'm truly talking about men who aren't as open-minded um but I'm not talking about all men, right? And I'm, and I also think that there are some women who are a bit ignorant and judgmental as well about oh, yeah. women who are 40 that are having babies. You know, I see some creators on TikTok who are 40 and having babies, and they have to stick up for themselves for the choice that they had for you know other women, you know, speaking on them and all that stuff. So it, there's the pick me girls, you know, of every age and mm-hmm. and persuasion. But yeah, um, yeah. Uh, what are they why, saying? What's their what's their debate? What's like, the, what's the problem? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Why? Yeah. Why like, is what, it if, your it, like? What, what's wrong? What? How is this causing you any like uh, anything? You know, what makes you you angry about a woman? You know, waiting until she's ready to have a baby. So the fact that she has like the right level of education that she wants is it that she has the right level of income that she wants to provide for this kid? Right? Like, like what? worst way <laughs> to like w- w- what worst indicator um that that means absolutely nothing uh than age right when it comes to determining when it's the right time to 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 bring a child in, into the world there there's so many other more important uh yeah parameters i guess of of what's going on in your life other than your age that matters so much more uh than 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 how than how old you are i i would I, I'm so happy I, I waited uh, to have children and because I, I, you know, I'm building so many things in, in my life that are going to create the right ecosystem to bring a, a child into the world and, and make sure that that child is happy and, and, and as healthy as possible. So um, it's so, I, I mean, I just like let women live um i I feel like is a is a response to like most of the most of the the comments under women's videos um there there, there's always going to be you know people who are are critical and even in our stuff like in some of the videos that we've put out about the podcast i've had i know monica doesn't read the comments um because she Mm -hmm. has a life oh that's good that's smart yeah, she. I know. I tell Monica she. But one of you has to, though, like right? It. Like one of you has to. So yeah. Liz is taking that. I guess it's. I Liz. don't read yeah. all of them. I you know. I mean, I don't read all of them, but I I have noticed a, a definitely a pattern of of a lot of men. Maybe they're Russian bots, but I think some of them are are real. Where you know that they're saying, Sadly. oh, you know, <laughs> oh, it, it's your fault, right? That that you're in this situation, or you know, if, if you what? were. Um, you know, if, if you were more attractive or if you weren't a feminist, maybe a man would have already, right? Like, 
wanted to have a baby with you as if again it's you know the 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 fact that i'm choosing to have a baby on my own terms oh my is somehow about men's guy. decisions when it's about my decision no i'm choosing to do this this isn't about you right it's it's we're so used to having ideas that really revolve around men and men's perspectives and men's decisions and men's thoughts and so it it still boggles the mind i think of a lot of people that a woman would uh make choices based on what's best for her and her children. Yeah. Okay, couple things. One, block that person. That is ridiculous. That <laughs> There's person more does than not one get Mon- to... Monica. Okay, well, block them all. It's like That's several. so ridiculous. Okay. Okay, well, so it's like three people <laughs> in the world. This is why you can't read comments. Um cuz you give those people way no. too much weight. But yeah, so uh that person's an idiot. Obviously. Also, <laughs> we aren't complaining. Like, we're not like, oh, we I'm... have to do this. This is put on us. And oh my God, we're we're forced to freeze our eggs. Yeah. Help. Like, no, <laughs> we're saying we get to do this. This is yeah. this is a very privileged position to be in to get to do it. It's an mm-hmm. interesting experience. So we're documenting it and talking about all the feelings and thoughts around it. But like, no, we are not like, this isn't a burden placed on us to freeze our eggs. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to be clear about that. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, I think going back to the, the question, I think part of what's happening when women especially say that, like comment on someone who's 40 and have thoughts about it, uh, cr- criticisms of it, I think there's probably – a jealousy underneath that, that they did sacrifice a lot of their life for children Mm. when they were young, because that's what society told them to do. It's, you know, they, they played by the rules and we aren't playing Mm. by the rules. And so that is a bummer. That can be a bummer. Cause if, if you see these like, you know, 35 year old women who are super successful and gave a lot of their life to themselves um, that can probably, I'm sure, instigate a little bit of like, well, I didn't get to do that. And often that gets, mm, that comes across as judgment or it's like, well, I didn't get to do that. Why do they get to do that? Now I'm mad at them. You know, I, 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 I don't like it, but I think that's playing a role. You bring up a really great point, yeah. um, that I wanted to kind of address, um, in terms of the pick me like it's 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 very pervasive actually in um in in social media or it's exposed rather in social media because like what you're saying is these these women are triggered and in terms of engagement the way that they're choosing to engagement is by by this projection by this by this pushing this narrative that protected them and kind of kept yeah. them in line rather than y'all that stepped out of line right and so they feel unsafe and triggered, and that's how they're engaging. But, but uh, this 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 is really good though because on TikTok, people will call a pick me girl out. You know, there's content being made all the time about pick me girls. And wait, and what is that? Typically, Sorry, what is the that? Gen- I'm not on. I feel like yeah, Monica's not on TikTok. <laughs> you, you, I feel like she doesn't. That's know okay. What we're gonna. About. We're going to keep you there, though. You need to know. I'm it's trying to get her on it. I'm so on it. What do you think? But what do you think a pick-me girl is, you know? What is what, a what pick-me girl? No, yeah, yeah, Monica, what do you think? What do you think it is? Yeah. That's a really good, that's, that's great. Okay. I'm so curious. I think it's a girl who <laughs> wants. Is it a negative thing or a positive thing? Yes. I need that context. N- no, it's it's negative. It's in it's through the lens of feminism, so it's calling someone okay. a pick me. Mhm. Okay, so is it someone who's trying to get picked by a guy and so they're like doing um um stuff? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Hell That's out. that is true. That's, That's it. it. No, you got you it got right. It. You had it. Good okay. job. That'll be on TikTok. <laughs> oh no. Oh my god. It's my oh, nightmare. No. <laughs> oh, sorry. I got I got to promote my podcast. Come on, guys. Get um, her on. She's very popular on TikTok. She just doesn't know because she's not on it. See? That's amazing. Yeah. At yeah. at Monica Padman. Um, oh my gosh. So, but Liz, so Liz then you know. So the pick me thing is these girls that basically come on and 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 they're yeah. 
I think there was that concept of male chauvinist pig. Do you guys remember that in like yeah. that, I mean, leadership yeah. classes mm-hmm, and whatnot? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but there and was, like, also like book you know it. who the original pygmy girl is? Like Phyllis Shafley. Like you know what I mean? Like Phyllis Shafley was a uber conservative white woman who literally was like working. Like she was a working woman in the 1970s and yet led a movement about women being in the home and and like <laughs> against the ERA and against the Equal Rights Ag- uh, Amendment and against feminism, even though she was a, uh, you know, uh, a benefiting from from from, be- uh, from feminism <laughs> directly and, and even like campaigning outside of her home, like, again, working woman uh, to erase the rights of working women. So like pick me girls are not um, a new phenomenon. I-, I love that we have a cool new term for it. But but women women get rewarded for um, for being sexist, and 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 the same goes for you know people of color get rewarded for for being you know the black person that white people invite to the party or whatever, right? Like like that that's a it, it's kind of a tale as old as time, uh, and and it's really uh, frustrating. But at the same time, I almost I don't know I just feel bad for those women because. Yeah, what, what real power? Like you're you're not actually having, yeah. What real getting reward? Access to real power. Exactly. What real reward are you getting if the people yeah. that are in are, are rewarding you are people that are also oppre- uh, looking to oppress you in the long yes. term? And I think I I think men. people think I'm a pick me girl a little bit because I talk about men, and I and I uh, there are I I know that there are women who think that I'm I'm placating men and and whatnot um, because I care about men or like I like men so um, I maybe I am maybe I am a pick me girl well no I, I think the think way that, that you're I I personally don't see it that way I think that um, y- involving men into the the conversation is so radical and important and I mean yeah. I'll tell you right now and, and I know this is a little off topic on the podcast and fertility and stuff but I can't not talk about this with you. Um, I I was really wrapped up in the the white feminism, you know. Um, th- uh, you know, I'm the voice of Kim Possible. I'm like all these little girls, like role models. And um, you know, growing up with that, I was like, oh, you know, like I can do anything. I can do anything. Well, of course I can do anything. I'm, 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 I'm white and I'm, I have an Ivy League education and like, I, ha- you know what I'm saying? So yeah. uh, I, I think that it took me a long time to understand uh, that privilege mm-hmm. and, and where, where my version of feminism truly was dismantled by, but it, it, it ate itself. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. in, in my opinion, it ate itself because like what I was saying about that guy talking about the ageism thing, the 26 year old throw you in the water. We had to be rewarded within a system of, oh, look how independent I am. Look how sexy I can be. But we got none of the body positivity, you know, and only the exploitation from, you know, from that moment in time. Um, And so, yeah, it's looking back, I'm a little ashamed of millennial feminism, if you want to call it that. and I'm, I, I, I am curious what you guys think of that and, and what direction this is all heading. Can we, can we heal from that by, by bringing men into the conversation or talking about our, our fertility and stuff like that? I think so. I think, I mean, I don't think, look, of course we can look back and be like, ew, that wasn't great or this wasn't great, but we, we can't be too mad at ourselves, right? Because we're living in that moment in time. And I, I that you have to be okay with progression and evolution and knowing that society changes and that if you're changing with it, you're, you're on the right path. Um, and I do yeah. think that we are slowly, well, in some ways, not slowly, but also moving towards something a little bit more equal. And it's just going to take time. I mean, these things take so long, like that progress does not happen over night and i do think conversations about these things open conversations are necessary to grow for everyone for men and women i am all about i am i guess i'm a if liz is a pick me girl i'm definitely a pick me girl i am not about 
like shaming men. Like it's not going to work. You guys, it's not going to work. Like shame does Mm -hmm. not work. The only thing that does is inclusion and, and patience quite often. Like I think expecting, like telling a guy, Hey, that's mansplaining. And then that they do it again. It's like, yeah, they're going to do it again. They're going to do it again for a while. You're going to have to be patient. You're going to have to keep saying it. You're going to, you're, it's like when you raise a kid, right? Like you can't just tell them Mm -hmm. once not to draw on the wall. Like they do, they do, they want to, and they do Mm -hmm. it and they get something out of it. So it requires patience. And I think we uh, just have to kind of get on board with that. I think sometimes it's a little it can be extreme when it's an all or nothing option on the table. It's like, no, that's just not going to work. I wish it would. It seems fast and easy, yeah. but it's just not possible. I, I think that's the problem with TikTok is that um, I read somewhere where they said that the best content is where you, you know, do the content, but sprinkle chaos on it, you know? And it's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's chaotic and it's polarizing, which is why you're seeing it on your feed. It's the algorithm, you know? And so... Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's a little I'm sure it's a little tricky as even for you guys as creators and and um, and authorities on this stuff because you, you where where this visibility is coming from is is a place of sort of unification you know yeah and and like if you're making mistakes then you're an activist if you're not making mistakes like are you really <laughs> like you know what I mean are you actually um, yeah I mean first of all are you actually living right like it, it's it, no. it, I think it goes beyond being being you know a, again a, a good ally or a good activist or whatever you want to call it um life is is about making m- mistakes and I um you know even this morning I don't know why I was thinking about this but I was walking out and I was like why do I want to be why do I want to be a good person like why do I want so why am I so attached to that as a as an identity um I think I, yeah, I, I hadn't texted someone back or, anyway, I was like feeling overwhelmed with like, you know, something I hadn't done perfectly or whatever. And then I was like having this anxiety about it. And I was like, what does it matter? Like, like, why, why are you, why are you spending so much time and energy being committed to an idea of yourself that, that isn't true for you and isn't true for anybody else, right? No one is perfect. Um, and I, and I think that a lot of, uh, per, 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 I think it's coming from all sides, but I I, I also think you know uh, progressives are 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 more uh, can be born guilty of this that it, it just turns into virtue signaling, right? And and it just turns into mm-hmm. proving to everybody else that you're a good person, and it, and it's like that's actually also not that's not activism. <laughs> that's not like right, being right. right of it. And, and yeah, so what I, are you, you actually know, and I, and doing? What men, are you doing to help? It, it, Yes, if you're just thinking about, uh, you know, it, it basically brings it back so much to yourself. And, and I say this to men too, you know, like your attachment to being a good guy is actually turning you into the bad guy. Like I have been mm-hmm. in, in, in relationships with, with, with guys who, you know, had read the books and were my book, right? Like had kind of understood it in, in, in so, so much more depth, I think, than, than m- maybe most men. But it almost, you know, gave them this overconfidence that if they did interrupt me or they did, you know, uh, mansplain or, or whatever it is, right? Like that's still going to be your programming. It's still going to happen. Um, it, it was immediately rejected. And, and in a way, you know, it, it, it was worse um, than when a guy does it and he, he doesn't think he's a great guy and, and is like, you know, uh, free of, of uh, any, any kind of patriarchal programming. So yeah, I just would I, it's something I have to practice and I have to do too of just like letting go of of, of this idea that I have to pr- you know that I have to be good like you know it's it's right. not helpful right or even consequence for that matter like we're all very aware that consequences exist in this cancel culture world that we live in mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. a point where it's like we've stopped talking to each other which mm-hmm. by the way I'm sure that's probably why podcasts are so healing for so many people yeah I think so. It's long form, so you can really, like, hear a lot of different sides. It's not 140 characters or whatever it is. Like, you can really – I mean, we say that all the time on Armchair. Like, we all – both of us, Dax and myself, would be canceled if it wasn't for the fact that 
we there's context. Like if somebody's like, oh, they said this and pull a line, we're like, well, but listen to the other 20 minutes around it. Like the, it's a whole conversation. And so we, right. we haven't, luckily, knock on wood, uh, but that's because you can hear a full conversation and it's not just headlines or yeah. clickbait. Right. That makes sense. That makes perfect sense. I have tried that tactic. <laughs> uh, I did YouTube videos where I was talking about, oh, how I lost all my money to a psychic and like da 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 da. And like, I've done that clip clickbait, although I delivered on the clickbait, right? But yeah. in my sort of like, in sort of my, my pick me, <laughs> I guess that's the theme of today, um, my pick me passion of trying to get and to build my brand and stuff, um, I had to sort of go with that. And and it, it, it and, and it did work to a point, but then you get that feedback of people truly not trying to. There's like the camp of people who are just looking at that headline in the first like couple minutes, and then like saying something salty versus the kind of community that you really truly want to build are the people that are 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 really supporting your cause and and getting to know you and what and all the things you're going through. So I'm gonna be uh, surely looking. To, to all of your episodes of this. And I want to know, like, where can we find it? Where is it? Um, well, yeah, obviously, it's going to be on Spotify and Apple and all that stuff. But please let me know. Like, can you give me the rundown? Yeah, Race to 35. It comes out October 12th. It's a weekly podcast. So that's our, our first episode. We'll air on October 12th. You can get it anywhere you get podcasts. Spotify, Apple, all of those places and it's under our armchair umbrella and we really hope <laughs> that you like it i mean it's funny <laughs> editing it because i've been i i'm i've been really struggling to edit it like i keep pulling it up and i'm like i don't want to do that right now like i don't want to do it i don't want i really have not wanted uh, to revisit it which is strange really? and then I had to That's think about it yeah I was like what's going on <laughs> like what what is my like block? unpack it for yourself mm -hmm. yeah like what is I have a block up about this and why and I think it's because the experience itself was so rich it was like so intense and so deep and emotional and it was a real vulnerable journey and I think now <laughs> ding 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 and <laughs> I think now um, the idea that it's like, about to be a product scare it's like feels scary, mm -hmm. and that, like I'm I'm in there tinkering mm -hmm. to make it such, and it it's like wait no, but this is like my this is like our life, this is our journey, and mm -hmm. now it's for everyone. I mean, I'm really excited. It is. I I um, I'm just protective of it. I guess it's like your gestation of your baby that's about to be born into the it world. Is. It is life <laughs> imitating art, imitating life, sort of thing. Love it, <laughs> love it. And Liz, how do you feel about it? Are you excited about it coming out? Or are you feeling vulnerable? I don't remember anything we talked about um, <laughs> because I had hormone brain the whole time, and I have ADHD. I don't know. I, I don't remember what I did like two hours ago. Yeah. So. I am probably uh, feeling great about it because I don't remember <laughs> the insane things I, I probably did. But I get like, I, Monica, you hadn't shared that with me. And I, you know, I want to create space for that. Like that, yeah, that that's your, you know, needing to go through the it, it again. And again, knowing how it ended and how it went. And, and yeah, that's Ooh. like, there's an emotional told to that that's that's you know in addition to all because Monica work is like the hardest working person I've ever met um she edits I, I everything it. and and it's such a labor like it's it's so much work um so yeah that's like in addition to that mountain of of, of work that would kind of overwhelm anybody it, it's also very intimate and personal for you so I, I totally get it Thing. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm excited. I want it. I'm excited first and foremost, but, and I want it to be helpful. Like that's just the main. I really hope this is helpful to others, uh, because otherwise, yeah. what's the point of putting out all this very personal, <laughs> personal stuff if everyone yeah. else is like, why'd you do that? Uh, but really, it was for us. It was the journey, and so that that's kind of that. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you. And on behalf of those that are, you know, entering into this journey, I would I would thank you for them. But I'm sure that people are going to be able to reach out to you. How can everyone get to you and follow you? Because you have 
so many amazing things going on. Where's the best place to follow you? Monica, I know it's not TikTok. Monica's on TikTok. Um, TikTok. Monica Padman. <laughs> you can find Monica Padman uh, on TikTok on my TikTok. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. you'll find some okay. videos there. Okay. Yeah, follow Liz's TikTok. There we go. Um, okay. And Instagram. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. And Liz, then where where we find you on many things? Yeah, I'm Liz Plank on um, on TikTok. I'm feminist tabulous on Instagram and Twitter and Be Real. Um, I'm I'm Liz Plank. I'm trying to get Monica on Be Real. Um, she doesn't no, know. What it I'm is not like. on that either. Liz. Should we do it? Monica, should we do it? You can do real. it. I'm going to take a break from all of this TikToking. Um, I don't know. And... I don't know. <laughs> no, one is enough for me. Instagram is enough. I really like Instagram, but that's like, that's all I can take. Yeah. It's good. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's probably for the best. Um, no, it, it makes you a more well-balanced per- human being. Um, but yes, like, um, but listen to the podcast. It, 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 like, whether you're thinking oh, about freezing your eggs or you know someone who is, and uh, you know, going to go through th- through the process. I, I really think one of the hardest things is is how you know, again, isolating it, it it can be to do it, and how there's just like a lot of things to think about. And the the greatest gift I, I you know, what, what was having Monica to do it with me, and so hopefully can provide that kind of community. For, for women who, yeah, went through it, want to go through it, are going through it, um, or the men that Just want to know about it. Going through it. Yes. Right. That's a good Yes, good it's, it's so but much even, more than a, it's, it's about so much more than just egg freezing, right? Like, we just yes. go into so many. It's yeah, a female topics. experience. And so I do think for, yes. it was, it's beneficial and minimally, I hope, interesting for any woman because I think there's relatable yeah. stuff across the board. And it is, it is that visibility that you guys are speaking about. And to, and Liz even mentioned, like, it is almost like a family experience too, in case somebody is, you know, with a partner and they're making that decision or whatever, like men can always come and come into y'all's content and, and sort of be there as a part of that conversation. I mean, educational process, it's, I don't know what more, what a better hobby would be trying to find a fantasy football league, you know, or actually (laughs) understanding your partner and what they're going through. Like, I don't know. Good life decision. Yeah. I think you could decision. probably no, do no, both, no. men. You could probably and do you both. can if you have the time. Yes, if you have yep. the time. Okay, right. one of those yeah, will get you laid, you. though. The other. Won't. <laughs> 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 oh my God! Yes, Liz. Yes. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for your time. I know y'all are very, thank very busy, you. and it means thank so you. much to me to make your acquaintance in this way. And I will be supporting you all the way. Thanks, if Christy. you ever need anything, yes, awesome. I'm so happy to to have met you and to. And I, and I love you. So there you go. Oh my gosh.